What did you say to me? You're running too much knitwear. <laughs> My old Navy cash is crying. Uber rewards have all expired. My Starbucks stars have all burned out. Oh no. There's just one thing. And it's not disposable fashion. Ew. Really makes me scream and shout. Yarn. Oh, I start to salivate. Yarn. My whole body starts to shake. Yarn. My heart starts to palpitate. Yarn. Some folks get off on the Duke of Hastings, but I'd rather go to a yarn tasting. Welcome, Fiber friends. Hi there, and welcome to Frank and Frog Fiber Podcast. What do you think? What do you say? Akara yarns. This is just a test shot to see how the yarn looks. I think it looks pretty good. Yes, ring light. All right. So, welcome to my channel. Ah, <laughs> uh. I am. Filming all the sections totally willy-nilly. I don't have any kind of organizational plan. Ah, so welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm coming to you from Toronto, Ontario, and my name is Janine, and I am an art school teacher. I teach drama and music theater at a performing arts high school. Uh, I have two kids, one is a baby. Um, He's gonna turn two in May. I started knitting, sorry. Now, this is so Frankenstein. I've now put my yarn on the shelf. It jumped there, magically. Um, but uh, I started knitting um, almost eight years ago, uh, before my first child was born, before my daughter was born, uh, who you saw in the opening video. Some acting. Um, yeah, so I started, I, I was actually a crocheter first. Uh, and, you know, then I was hanging out at a knitting store crocheting. You know what that leads to. And now I have friends who are sewers. Do you say sewists or sewers? Uh, but the sewing, it, lo it looks really fun. And then, um, yeah. So anyway, I wanted to start a podcast. I saw some that I really loved, like Michael from Piece for Peace uh, Crafting. I just... I love him. So if you don't watch Piece for Piece Crafting, there's a vibe about it that's really beautiful. And Michael seems like a beautiful human, even though I don't know him personally, but he's an educator and a dancer. I mean, uh, he seems fabulous to me. So uh, I saw that one. Oh my gosh. And then I saw Les Garçons, their podcast, and I was uh, completely intimidated and was basically like, hmm, maybe, maybe I should not make a podcast. I sent a message to Les Garçons, um, kind of commenting on how amazing the editing of their podcast is. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, not only are they really interesting to listen to and uh, totally charming and uh, mm, they talk about drag race. So basically they had me at hello. <laughs> they had me at hello, 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 if you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, uh, Vincent reached out uh, back to me and he explained that Max actually went to school for um, film editing uh, and uh, yeah, that I shouldn't be too intimidated. Uh, but he was so lovely to respond in that way. And uh, yeah, so I thought I'd give it a go. You know, what have I got to lose? Uh, I got my first vaccine on Tuesday, a little AstraZeneca, uh, and I'm super excited about that. I also have a husband that lives in this house with me as well, uh, and he is a very yarn supportive person and uh, loves everything I make, and he's been eyeing all of my knitting and wishing and hoping, praying that one day I would make him, sorry, I got my clicker in my hand, that one day I would make him a sweater. And so that's why I am finally 
gonna make him a sweater. I'm gonna make him a cardigan. Um, maybe cardigans are more masochistic than pullovers, but um, I'm gonna do it anyway. And I'll show you what I what I got to make it with. No, not that one. Mm -hmm. Wool of the Andes. It's a very inexpensive wool that's pretty good to make things with. From Nipix. And this is going to be a ridiculous cardigan for my husband. Um, the cardigan is called Timberline. It is extremely difficult. Pretty much all the comments on Ravelry say, I'm happy I made this because it taught me things, but I will never make it again. It's basically like the gauntlet of knitting. So I have 17 balls of this Wool of the Andes and Marble Heather from Knit Picks. So honestly, I looked into getting Brooklyn Tweed to make uh, the Timberline sweater, but I could not afford to make uh, the sweater out of that. Um, I really love Brooklyn Tweed. Uh, if anyone has used it, it's really, really nice to use. It's awesome for color work. <sighs> yeah, I really love it. Um, I know some people don't like any scratchiness in their yarn, but I don't know. It's all right with me. Oh yeah, and this is my Le Pouf cardigan. Um, I wonder how I can stand up with this situation. <laughs> can't see anything but yeah it looks like this oh 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 supermodel work way close way too close to the camera to do anything oh oh if i back up a little bit yeah so you can see like there's the colors um and they're all hedgehog fibers uh these colors were all post <laughs> Somebody just saw my yarn song and they told me that I have reached new levels of nerd. Kind of proud. Now, the podcast is called Frank and Frog for a reason. Okay. Uh, I actually didn't have to frog any part of this sweater, luckily. Uh, no, that's, that's a lie. I actually had to frog part of the sleeve because I ran out of the pink. Uh, <laughs> so... This got Frankenstein here because I had to mix some of this color with uh, the pink to finish the sleeve because I was running out of pink. Um, also, <laughs> some of the parts of the sleeve are, are not the same color, like exact colorway as the one in the body because um, my friend wanted this to be longer and I totally was going to run out of yarn, but I had yarn left over from my... Um, Rose Cardigan by Andrea Mowry. So, I don't think you can, you know, you can't clock it. You wouldn't read her for that, right? Oh, don't look at my jogging pants. Okay. Yes. You can do dance moves like this. Okay. Don't want anyone to get too excited, so I better stop dancing. And it's a free pattern, like all of her patterns, and I used Hedgehog Fibers yarn. It is one of my favorite yarns. Um, it's one of those yarns like Lola Bean, like La Bien Aime, where I just find that the colors are just so compelling. Uh, they're some of my favorite colors I've ever seen. So I use Hedgehog Fibers for quite a few projects and then uh, try and move around and switch it up. Is this? No, that's not the way. Oh, there's some random children's books behind the bag. Uh, is this how you keep your yarn? All right. So what's in? Let's take a look. This is from the Knitting Loft, and the yarn is called Penelope. Um, Merino d'Alais Biologique. I am not going to get to continue reading that. Wow. I am fired from ever speaking French. Okay. Yes, this Penelope yarn. Ooh. Ooh. 
there's a little there's a little sea foam yeah like why am i showing the label show the actual color yeah see how many yarns i can hold and hold the bag oh you can put it there okay and these are the last two colors so these are gonna be friends in a sweater what do we say what do we think okay and I'm going to be making uh, the Jupiter crop out of that. Yes. So I got this yarn. Oh, that was upside down. I'm very good at life. So I got this yarn to make. Guess which project. I feel like everyone has made this project because this maker is so incredibly charismatic, compelling, and she's an activist, um, she's Afro-Latina, and her name is Denise Byron. Um, she creates really intuitive projects, and I really loved hearing her story, and uh, how she got from A to B to C, and her how her background in design influenced her designing of sweaters and the hat Dana. Um, but I'm gonna make the wave of change. Uh, and I'm gonna make the cardigan. And I think it's gonna be just absolutely spectacular. What are you saying? What are you saying? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Like Shea Coule level? What are we saying? Sasha Velour level? All right. Uh, does everybody like drag queens? Okay, perfect. Okay, and then. <laughs> this is. This is pretty much the end of my stash. <laughs> this is it. That's all she wrote. So then I have um, these two Le Bien Aime. Was that was that good? Was that really good French? Okay. <laughs> uh, and the colorway is called Sorry. So it's super beautiful. That's all the yarn I have to make things with. Um, what I'm gonna make with this sari is um, the, it's like Raglan V-neck by Jessie May Designs. Um, I need to look it up to see the, its exact name. Oh, anything more to show you? I also picked up this very cute project bag from Spin me a yarn, and the buttons on it are from another local Toronto store called By Stitual. And when I heard that name, I was instantly drawn to this store just because if anything gives off a whiff of being queer positive and accepting of everyone in the crafting community, I want to shop there. And I think a lot of other crafters are feeling this way too. A lot of people that I know, we are now looking um, to see that the crafting stores we go to have a social, social conscience. That's really important to me. So, what have I finished? Well, very recently I finished the outline tank. Yes, here she comes. The outline tank. Walking down the runway. Um, this is not for me. This is for one of my students um, because she did a whole bunch of, my eye is itchy. She did a whole bunch of photo editing, or no, video editing um, for one of our shows. We studied some Russian theater. I know that doesn't sound fun, but it really was. Uh, and she edited the final version and don't, don't mind my ends. I haven't sewn in. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I made this for her and Jessie Mae talked about how satisfying it was to, um, pull your stitches apart, to drop your stitches. <sighs> Let me tell you, it is a thrill. Uh, I'm not joking. I am not joking. It is actually the most fun you can have probably ever right now. 
Um, so I highly recommend making this pattern. I made this with Juniper Moon Zoe and um, while I really love the, the fabric that I got out of it, um, I really like, uh, yeah. I uh, had to switch to a much smaller needle on the pearl side um, because it's a, like a tiny bit nubbly. I don't know if you know what I mean, but um, yeah, all in all, it was, uh, it was fun. Maybe that's with all plant fibers. I haven't knitted with plant fibers as much as with wool. So you can let me know in the comments if uh, you always need to switch to a smaller needle on the pearl side or Maybe people just do that naturally on everything in it. I don't usually have to. Uh, so that's done. I don't know if you have children's toys that make noises at all hours at your house. The nerve. <laughs> I think it's done now. So. <laughs> I finished my rose cardigan uh, just a little while ago. Um, P.S. If you're in Toronto right now, remember how yesterday it was winter and today it is summer. Um, yesterday it was like zero and today it is currently like 18 degrees outside, gonna be 19. What? What? Okay, anyway. Um, so yeah, so once again, I'm gonna look like I'm like monogamous with hedgehog fibers, but I used hedgehog fibers for this, fibers for this project. I used skinny singles, um, which is not what you're supposed to use. You are supposed to use DK weight. Um, I was reading a lot of the um, Ravelry notes, and I know we all do this. You go and you look at the Ravelry notes to get like the rundown. And I was noticing a lot of people were saying that their cardigans were turning out big. So, <laughs> I did a few things. One of one of them was not swatching. Okay. <laughs> so I used smaller yarn. Uh, I used a 2.75 needle. Um, and I think that it's a 3.5 needle. I'd have to look at the pattern again. Um, but yeah, so... And then I knit a small. And I'm 5 foot 9. So this is what my small looks like. You can kind of see, oh God, my jogging pants are horrible. I should learn next time. But are we all not wearing jogging pants right now over there? Are people wearing hard pants and I don't know about it? I mean, I thought we had all committed to soft pants. Soft pants during the pandemic. Okay, so uh, yeah. It's done. I love it. It's amazing. Uh, and the four colors I used are, mm, I think this one's called Coral. The next one's called Rose Hip. Then Cry Baby is the one with fluorescent in it. And then this is Teacup. Um, and you know what's funny? This is one batch of Teacup. And then uh, th this, at the top of this, is another batch of Teacup. So if you look at how different that is, how little pink there is in this, um, compared to how much pink and how many speckles there are in this. Um, the really fun things about the rose cardigan, okay, so this is kind of a marathon project. You know you knit it in four quadrants if you've seen the pattern. So you knit the same thing four times. That in and of itself, when you're like me and you're a Frankensteiner and a Frogger, I think I ripped out all the parts at least once um, and kind of like knit them tighter or I don't know did something differently and then you know it's awesome so you seam it together one of the seams is here under the arm and that's kind of a regular seam and then uh, the seam on the arm is actually an inside out mattress seam seam and it makes this line all the way down I've got them folded but they're they're kind of long the cuffs um and I loved uh, that effect. When it was finished, I was just like so impressed. And then the other, fun sorry, I'm knocking over children's toys. The other fun part is this cable that goes down. I know my extremely speckly yarn kind of hides the cable, but I'm okay with it. We'll, I'll get through it. All right. Um, so that's my rose card again. I really enjoyed uh, 
what I learned <laughs> from making it. Um, and I love wearing it. I wear it all the time. What is on the needles? What is on the needles? What is on the needles? I'll show you. It is a love note. Uh, yes, it's going to be a love note. Sorry, it's now summer. And so I had to take off my clothes. I am sorry for the nudity. Oh my God, oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a love note. And the color is, oh, I'll show you the right side. The color is quite spectacular. <laughs> I'm gonna show you something and it's quite shameful. This is, this is my frogged um, love note that I started and then made a mistake during the lace and could not for the life of me figure out what it was. So instead of separating the um, mohair from the yarn, I just made a ball around the mohair ball. Oh, I think I made a ball around both of them. So both both the, the regular yarn and the mohair are inside of this. See, this is why it's called Frankenfrog. Can't make this stuff up, man. What am I even doing? What am I doing? Okay. Hey, and I just wanna give a shout out to some of the yarn stores that I like to support in Toronto. Um, and I hope to kind of do some interviews with some of the owners of Toronto yarn stores in the future with uh, this, if even anyone watches this. Like who's, who's watching this? I don't know. Um, but uh, uh, Spin Me A Yarn is a, a, a yarn store that's just down by the lake shore and that's close to where I live in Etobicoke and it's owned by a wonderful woman named Trina who is extremely open-hearted and really welcoming to everyone. Um, and I will also shout out uh, the Knit Cafe, which is actually where I learned to knit. Uh, so uh, that one's in Roncesvalles if you're from Toronto and if you're ever around there, you should check out their collection of Brooklyn Tweed because it is uh, amazing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to keep shouting out yarn stores as we keep going and uh, I try and spread my business around uh, and did I mention by Stitchual? I think I did. Um, because I, I don't know, I feel like these local yarn stores um, are really getting us through. A lot of knitters have said that and I feel that way as well. Well, fiber friends, I think that's all she wrote for today. Oh, well, you can see my my uh, jab wound. <laughs> that's not what it is. Uh, but yeah, my Maxine uh, Band-Aid. And I have now um, put my yarn on the shelf like a self-respecting yarn podcaster would. Okay. Oh, uh, and... That's my whole stash. The stuff up here is like leftover bits of things. Is that kind of stash? No. Stash is like whole balls of yarn. So I don't know if this is embarrassing or if this is like good. I'm not sure. <laughs> is this showing self-control? Maybe. Scream and shout Yarn Oh, I start to salivate Yarn I wanna be where the fiber is